One of the things I really enjoy about Mises University is that I think it does a great job of highlighting how the, you know, the complexities that go in the process of creating so many of the things that we enjoy as consumers, right? I mean, the purposes of talks by uh, Dr. Sean Rittenauer and Jonathan Newman, you know, all kind of highlighted how there is this incredible complexity um, to the world that is able to produce goods um, that we take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think the same thing is true when it comes to uh, the production of ideas that end up shaping the world. Uh, one of the things I, I love most about uh, Mises' works is when he talks about the importance in the role that ideas have in shaping civilization. Um, you know, that these are tangible things that, that have direct uh, consequences on the, world's, we, on the world we live in. Well, just as there is the complexity of a structure of production that brings about consumer goods, the same is true in the ability of producing consumable ideas. Uh, you know, with, with talks by uh, Dr. Klein and Dr. Byland, we talked about the importance of entrepreneurship uh, in the way that firms, you know, firms are not simply black boxes that we can yada yada over in order to understand how innovation and, and new products are put on the market. Firms are that driving dynamic uh, that produce those goods. You know, they, we can't take their, their existence for granted. And I think we've seen this clearly play out uh, within the history of the Austrian school. You know, it, it is uh, truly incredible to, to um, just you know, imagine what Louis von Mises found for himself when he came here uh, from Europe after fleeing the Nazis. And if anyone who has not read the the, the I think that the most powerful book in the Mises bookstore is uh, Guido Holzman's Last Night of Liberalism. It's one of the great benefits that we have as Austrians is not simply having the right ideas, uh, but we have such incredible heroic figures whose examples um, should inspire us to be the best that we can be. So Mises came to America with very little institutional support. Right? He, uh, the only reason he was able to have a teaching position at New York University was due to the benevolence of private donors who were interested in promoting his works. Uh, he was lucky to have a major ally in the media, in Henry Hazlitt, uh, who helped get Mises connected within the New York scene, and who used his platform to help popularize Mises' ideas. Uh, he also benefited from Leonard Reed and the establishment of Fee, um, that was dedicated towards not simply trying to influence the intellectuals. After all, at, at this time in America, uh, it was, was, American universities were incredibly hostile uh, to the uh, laissez-faire ideas of Mises. Um, but by persuading the public, um, particularly aided by the massive network of uh, entrepreneurs and businessmen uh, going, uh, push, trying to push back against FDR's New Deal, uh, Mises was able to reach an entire new, new uh, audience that he would otherwise not have had access to. And during, for a period, there was a, a time of great success. You had the founding of the libertarian press that published popular versions of Mises' speech, uh, speeches and articles for the lay audience. You had, through NYU, uh, the, the kernels of building uh, a, a new group of Austrian scholars from this kind of uniquely American libertarian tradition, such as you know, obviously Murray Rothbard and Israel Kirzner. Uh, you had the, uh, 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 the, the success of Human Action, um, which was the book that you know, turned uh, Rothbard into a, a Misesian um, and was actually able to have a, a, a remarkably successful commercial audience. Um, unfortunately, however, uh, these, these great kernels um, that were being planted in the late 40s, early 1950s, uh, something happened along the way that by the time that Lou, that Lou Rockwell founded the Mises Institute in 1982, um, he said that you could probably fit all the Misesian economists in Murray Rothbard's living room. Now, a part of that had to do with competition within the libertarian academic sphere, right? You, you had uh, Milton Friedman, uh, and, and the, uh, the influence of the Chicago School became very uh, a, a dominant economic force, so much so that uh, when Murray Rothbard was at Cato, one of the big splits there was caused because of Cato, uh, Cato's support now for sh Chicago School economics, um, which you know, is, is simply not a replacement for Mises. You had it with William H. Buckley uh, taking up a lot of the area and the, the financial support within the American right 
um, with the rise of neoconservatism and the uh, increasingly hostile foreign policy uh, brought about by the Cold War changes. You had a lot of dysfunction within the libertarian movement gener in general with some of the personality splats between uh, Ayn Rand. Right? So what you had was that, that basis of institutional support that Mises was able to enjoy in the 1950s uh, became chaotic and dried out. Uh, in fact, you know, it's very. Uh, you read the memoirs from Louis von Mises, and he talks about how, uh, you know, in the late '70s, you know, he he saw himself as you know not a great historian of I or that 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 you know he he tried to, his his goal with his ideas was to bring about a more peaceful and prosperous society, um, but instead he rather just became a historian of decline. Well, uh, Louis von Mises died in 1973, and then. Incredibly, the next year, we saw the, the, the birth of a new Austrian revival. Uh, Joe Salerno, who, who is just an incredible uh, economic historian, has written a wonderful article on the South Royalton Conference uh, and, and you know, trying to trace back what was actually the, the uh, stepping stone that allowed for a conference of Austrian academics to gather in the first place there in 1974. Oh, he traces that back to another source of institutional support that, that the Austrian school is able to enjoy through the Volcker Fund, uh, through the publishing of Man, Economy, and State by Murray, by Murray Rothbard. So again, you had institutional support that produced products that, able to, that was able to inspire academics um, to further expand on the work and start building out uh, the school of thought. But it really wasn't until the founding of the Mises Institute in 1982 uh, that the Austrian school became the thriving tradition that it truly is today. Um, that's why, I mean, there is no, in my opinion, there's no more important living human being uh, to the uh, creating a, a civilized and peaceful society than Lee Rockwell. So we consider the fact that at this time, you know, during the 70s, you had a, a great consolidation of libertarian capital um, through you know, individual decision makers that had their own biases and agendas. You know, Lou Rockwell's ability to raise capital for the dedication of reviving a minor school of, of intellectual thought is, is really astounding. And he was able to get people to, to contribute to do this and, and, and did so again without the support of, of a, a major billionaire donor or without any firm, firmly established institutional investments, um, such as having a major university. Now, the Institute was eventually able to, to have some success with Auburn University for a brief period of time, which allowed for a whole generation of faculty members, many of which were teaching this week um, that got their degrees from Auburn University. But I think one of the really great things about the Institute's entire approach, the, the one that brought me here, is the fact that we understand the importance of popularizing these ideas. Um, it, it, uh, Rothbard, uh, has, it, it has wrote a great deal about his ideas of libertarian strategy and about how the importance is not simply trying to fixate on capturing institutions that are, have various incentive problems and, and built up a kind of plaque that make them inherently hostile to free market ideas, but instead trying to talk to people directly. Um, this is what the Institute has done. Uh, done it through the production of popular article versions of Mises Rothbard and the Austrian School with the, the free market um, which was our, our print uh, newsletter for a very long time. So that gave way to Mises.org, um, which is now, which is still today, one of the, the most wet, read economic blogs in the world today. Uh, it happened with the, uh, we started to allow us to have student programs where we have hundreds of students that are genuine Mises, U, you know, Mises Institute alumni uh, around the world. One of the great assets of not simply being narrowly focused on the development of scholars, though obviously we benefit tremendously from that action, right? We need new scholastic blood to keep developing and building um, the, the Austrian tradition. But by not simply focusing on that or trying to focus on trying to win over levels of power, power in DC, we've created this incredible division of labor, of, of ideological battle. And there's some really cool uh, uh, things that we take for granted in the day-to-day -day basis that, you know, owe a lot of their inspiration from this popularization of Austrian ideas from the Mises Institute. For example, Wikipedia was literally founded after Jimmy Wells, as a student of Auburn University, visited the Mises Institute at the recommendation of Mark Thornton, read Hayek's Decentralization of Knowledge article, uh, and from that spawned the idea of an encyclopedia that could be edited uh, by 
anyone out there. Doing so created, he, he, he had, a, had numerous attempts to try to create a, a definitive online Wikipedia. It wasn't until he got this key insight at the Mises Institute uh, that, he allowed the Mises Insti that, that he allowed for Wikipedia to be what it is today. Unfortunately, they've been kind of back, backsliding against some of that control, right? But uh, Wikipedia at its best was, was very Hayekian. Um, we've seen it through the spread of Austrian ideas internationally. In 2012 or 2011, Elio Beltrao of Mises Brazil came here and talked about the Austrian libertarian movement as a starfish and not a spider. The idea being that what we have is that, again, instead of the centralized structure of, of funding and everything else where he, you, know, you kill the head, um, the entire movement dies, which is what we've seen in libertarian movements in the past. Instead, what we have is a series of cells of, of different, uh, uh, different individuals inspired by the, the Mises Institute strategy, taking it back into their country uh, and building up their own networks. Um, we've seen it you know, with Mises Brazil, which has done the incredible feat where Louis von Mises has searched more in that country than John Maynard Keynes. And in some months, Murray Rothbard has searched more than Milton Friedman. That's an incredible accomplishment. Uh, we see it with scholars around the world that dedicate themselves to, do, to, to translating uh, human action, man, economy, and state, the works of Hans Hermann Hoppe, Joe Salerno, um, you know, that, that bring uh, uh, Tom Woods overseas to receive Lifetime Achievement Awards. Um, you know, this is all great. We've got a massive international marketplace because of this populariz uh, popularization strategy uh, that has been so key to the Institute. And because of that, even though we do not have a physical location in the halls of power, uh, by reaching out to the public, we've actually had an incredible amount of influence, even on the political system. Ron Paul, you know, is the most influential libertarian politician in American history, um, you know, is a, is a part of the Mises Institute brand. We have state legislators around the country that have fought for uh, uh, state legal tender laws, uh, trying to push back against Federal Reserve dominance on the money supply, inspired by Mises Institute ideas. Uh, we've actually been able to, to stop uh, a certain... Uh, positions within the federal government, um, thanks to having staffers within Washington that read Mises, recognize the problems, and are able to, to play their own internal games um, to leverage our, uh, our knowledge. So again, even though we ourselves do not have a direct physical presence, the fact that we are able to reach out beyond simply the ivy towers of academia and inspire normal individuals to figure out ways of applying these ideas gives us so much more strength than we ever could if we tried to centrally plan it. Um, and again, so that's, that is one of the things that have, has inspired me. Um, again, I, I think that uh, again, the, the contributions that Lou Rockwell has made to the Austrian school, if you really think about it, it's it, Louis von Mises, Murray Rothbard, and, and Lou Rockwell. Because without the, the, the ability to create an institution that provides the support and, and for, for these ideas and these scholars, and the, the, the human uh, interaction between the ideas and theory uh, and, and the time and place in which we, we live, that is only made possible because of the actual you know, entrepreneurship of, of, of these sort of institutions. And you know, Lou Rockwell is uh, the, the, the best of, uh, I think, within the libertarian tradition. So again, I apologize for starting off late and kind of wrapping up, or uh, uh, yeah, trying to get it right on time. Um, but thank you very much.